Hi, so my name is uh, Edward, and so I'm going to present our work on enriching word vectors with subword information. And so this is joint work with a um, colleague at Facebook AI Research, Piotr Boyanovsky, Armand Joulin, and Tomasz Mikolov. So this is a very short uh, introduction to learning word representation for people who've been living under a rock uh, in the past few years. And so the goal here is to learn uh, a vector representation for each word W. And so a lot of research has been done on uh, uh, using the distributional uh, hypothesis to do so. And so the idea here is uh, to learn representation so that you can predict, predict the words that appear in the context well. And so our work is an extension of the word to vec uh, skipgram model. And so now I will briefly uh, present uh, this, uh, this model. So it is framed as a binary classification problem where the goal basically is to predict whether two work will co-occur uh, or not. And so the idea is to try to maximize a score function between uh, a word W and uh, the uh, word of the context C. And so the Skipgram model uses a very simple um, function, a scoring function, which is just the dot, dot product between the vector representation of W and the vector representation uh, of the context word C. And so one of the big limitations of this uh, model is that it ignores uh, morphology because we have one uh, different vector representation for each word. So what we propose to do here is to enrich uh, this uh, model with subword information. And so basically what we'll do is to represent each word as a bag of uh, character engrams. So for example, the word skiing will be represented by the following four gram, where we add a special character at the beginning and the end of the word. And we also keep the full word as part of the subwords, so that we still learn one uh, vector for uh, each word of the vocabulary. And so then we will learn one vector representation for each of the, also for each of the character and gram. And so basically given uh, the set GW of the character and gram appearing in a word W, we will now represent the word W by the sum of the vector corresponding to the uh, character and grams. And so now the scoring function is the dot product between this sum of character and grams uh, vector, uh, and we take the dot product with the context vector. And so we, we do not use subword information for learning representation of the, of the context at the moment. So what's cool about this model is that it's super easy to obtain a vector representation for out of vocabulary word just by taking the uh, sum of the uh, subword uh, vectors. So now some technical details about uh, our approach. So in most of the experiments that I will present next, we use n-grams between three and, three and six characters. We hash the character n-grams into k buckets so that we can control the size of the model easily. Uh, we use stochastic gradient descent to uh, minimize the log likelihood, and we use the same uh, tricks that can be found uh, in word to vec which is subsampling the frequent word and sampling the window size so that uh, word closest uh, uh, each to each other have uh, more importance. And so basically, uh, our current implementation is uh, less than two times smaller than the word to vec uh, scheme gram implementation. So it means that our model is still re reasonably fast and can be trained on large data sets. And finally, uh, our code is open source uh, and is av available as part of the fast text package that you can find, uh, that you can find online. So now let me uh, present some experiments that we did to evaluate the, the quality of uh, the model learned by our method. So first, uh, we, um, so first we compare the, uh, our approach to uh, a Skipgram and SIBO uh, baseline. And all the models here were trained on, uh, on Wikipedia, on the same uh, Wikipedia data. And so first we evaluate uh, the model on a word analogy task. 
Um, and so we do that on four different languages, uh, which are Czech, German, English, and Italian. And so what we can observe here is that the subword information helps a lot for learning, for capturing syntactic information. On the other hand, um, for semantic information, it doesn't really help a lot. And uh, even for some languages, such as German or Italian, uh, the, the performance uh, on semantic analogy will degrade uh, a bit when adding subword information. And I'll come back to uh, that uh, later and explain why it is the case. A last thing to note is that the biggest improvement is obtained for uh, the morphologically rich uh, language check, which also has the smallest uh, training data in this uh, experience. We also performed experiments on uh, word similarity data set, where again we compare our approach with uh, a Skipgram and SIBO baseline. And here we consider two variants uh, of uh, our model. The first one with the, uh, in the first column is basically using a null vector for out of vocabulary word. So basically we do not exploit the subword information at test time, while in the second column uh, we do uh, represent out of vocabul vocabulary word by the sum of their character uh, and gram vector. And so what we observe is that, for example, on the first uh, German uh, data set, that uh, using uh, computing uh, word representation for out of vocabulary word works quite well because it gives a, a significant uh, improvement on uh, this uh, data set. Uh, we also observe that for rare word, uh, using uh, morphology, uh, uh, the uh, subword information helps, uh, helps a lot. Uh, another set of experiments where now we compared our approach to uh, other uh, morphology uh, aware method to learn word representation. So first we compare to the um, recursive neural network uh, of uh, Leung et al to the uh, morpheme SIBO of Q et al, and to the um, method of Soriket and Osh. And so basically we see that our very simple method uh, um, performs relatively well compared to these uh, this other uh, techniques. I should say that uh, all the method uh, in this uh, table were trained on the same uh, data set so that the numbers are uh, comparable. One uh, interesting thing to uh, observe here is that on the second uh, German data set, um, our method has a significant uh, uh, improvement over the method by Soricut and Osh, which basically only consider prefix and uh, suffixes. And uh, in German, there's a lot of compounding that uh, is therefore not captured by this uh, technique, but uh, is uh, captured by uh, ours. So we also performed some experiments on uh, language modeling where we used the learned uh, vector representation to uh, initialize the lookup table of, of a neural uh, language model. Um, and so we performed experiments on five languages, uh, Czech, German, Spanish, French, and Russian. Uh, and the data sets uh, that um, are used in these experiments are relatively small, uh, roughly one million uh, tokens, but, has, but have relatively large vocabulary size because uh, all the word appearing in the uh, uh, training set uh, were kept in the vocabulary. And so here uh, we compare our uh, method to a randomly initialized LSTM uh, as well as a, an LSTM uh, initialized with a skipgram vector. And we also compare to the log bilinear model that is using morpheme of Bota and Blonsom and the character uh, CNN LSTM of uh, Kimetal. And so what we observe is, again, is that uh, our uh, method uh, leads to big improvement uh, compared to uh, uh, all the baseline and especially for morphologically rich languages such as Czech and uh, Russian. Um, we also looked at the uh, performance of the model uh, based on the size of the data set, of the training set. And so here we compare uh, two the two variants of our method. Uh, one where we again use the subword information to compare, uh, to uh, compute word vector for OOV word, which is the red curve. 
one we do not where we do not use this information which is the orange curve and finally a SIBO uh, baseline which is uh, blue the blue curve and so what we observe is that uh, using um, the subword information to compute uh, representation for OOV word is really helpful for small uh, data set where you the uh, rate of out of vocabulary word will be pretty high and so yeah so this experiment was on the uh, rare word similarity data set from Stanford. So finally, uh, we also looked at uh, the um, influence of the size of the n-grams that we considered in the, in the model. And here we performed experiments on German and uh, evaluated the model on uh, semantic and syntactic analogies. And so what we observe is that for semantic uh, information using longer n-gram is uh, much better than shorter ones. And so basically that's why we had a drop in performance in the previous table. It's because we were using old uh, n-gram from uh, three to uh, six. And so if you want to learn a good, um, to, to learn word vectors that will capture more semantic information, it's better to use big longer n-gram. And on the other hand, for syntactic uh, information, it's better to use uh, shorter character engrams. So um, we've shown in this work that it's possible to uh, learn representation so that it's possible to compute a word vector for out of vocabulary words easily. It's also possible to learn much better uh, representation for small amount of, of data. And so basically our method is much more data efficient than uh, uh, one that don't have parameter sharing at all uh, uh, across word vector. And finally, the, the size of the n-grams that are considered allow to tune the uh, kind of information that will be learned with shorter n-gram uh, capturing more syntactic information and longer n-gram capturing uh, more semantic information. So one uh, last uh, word. So we have pre-trained models that are uh, available online. So first we have a set of models that were trained on Wikipedia for uh, almost 300 uh, different languages. And we also distribute the uh, subword information. So it's possible to uh, compute a word vector for OOV word using this model. And we've also trained uh, models for English on much uh, bigger data set uh, using Wikipedia, news, uh, and common crawl. And so this uh, model for English actually use uh, new tricks uh, uh, that uh, we will uh, describe in the paper that will be out uh, shortly. Uh, and so we compare those uh, new uh, vector to uh, the glove vector, which, uh, which are uh, uh, very popular and uh, usually considered to be the state, uh, state of the art. And so we see that on the word analogy task, uh, our uh, new vector strongly uh, outperform uh, the uh, glove uh, vector. We also uh, performed some comparison on um, a machine uh, comprehension uh, task uh, on the squad uh, data set. And so we use uh, the document reader from uh, Chen et al, which is presented uh, at the poster session tonight. And I invite you to uh, uh, visit the poster uh, number 10. And uh, here, basically, we took this model and just changed uh, the, the pre-trained vector to see the influence on the, on the performance. And so the first GLOVE uh, model was trained on Wikipedia, as was the first FastX model. And so we observed that uh, the, uh, in that case, we have uh, approximately 1% uh, percent improvement in F1 score. And similarly, for model trained on uh, the web, uh, the common crawl uh, data, we also have uh, the FastX uh, word uh, vector uh, also lead to a 1% percent improvement. So this is uh, the end of my talk. Again, you can find uh, all the code model uh, online uh, on the FastText website. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to take some questions now.
Hi, great work. Uh, did you try using more expressive models, not back of words, but like RNN or CNN to transform engrams to the embedding? Excuse me, I, I didn't end the... Did you try using more expressive models to produce the embedding from characters here? You're just... Uh, you mean CNNs and... Yes. So, no, we didn't. So, basically, here, the, the goal of this work was to have a very simple model that can be easily trained on large data sets. And so, basically, it takes a couple of hours to train uh, this, this model on, uh, on Wikipedia, which would probably be uh, harder to do with uh, using CNN or uh, recurrent neural network. And so, in, uh, in the... Um, uh, in this table, actually, some of the uh, no. In this model, some of the model actually use CNN to get uh, 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 representation. The Kim et al. Uh, language model actually use character CNN to encode the. the yeah, the but model. then those CNNs are trained on language modeling, so with much less training data. So. So this. So the the word embedding were also trained on the language modeling data, not on the full Wikipedia. Ah, okay. Thank you. Uh, hi. Um, I have several questions concerning uh, analogical task. Uh, first of all, when you use uh, a original method for solving analogies, you exclude the question works, uh, words from the possible answers. Yes. Uh, which is a little bit an issue by itself because you cannot solve analogies like snow to white is a salt to, to white. And since you don't, and if you don't exclude this word, words that the answer uh, with basically all the embeddings tend to land in the source words. And here, since you use the subword parts, you have sort of bigger chance that the, sub, at least for morphological relations, that subwords will exactly match the whole word. And you sort of get right answer in this not honest method, but if you try to do it without excluding the source words, you, I would expect you might get uh, less accuracy. I mean, yeah, I agree that like for, for in this example, like the, getting the word representation of skiing by adding the representation for ski and ing is like, as you said, is uh, we'll, we'll do very well on this kind of analogy because that's exactly what you basically need to do. Uh, I mean, I'm not... I, we haven't tried, like, evaluating without uh, excluding the word, so I cannot really comment about, like... Yeah, the and there are also alternative methods to solve uh, analogies. Uh, plus, the uh, analogy data sets that you're referring to uh, is sort of a very limited set of uh, relations. There are, and it's also very imbalanced in terms of some relations has much more uh, words in them than others. So if your method just does better in those, like one particular relation, it does better on the whole data sets. There are more balanced uh, data sets for an, uh, analogical reasoning, like a big analogy test set, which might be interesting to try. Yeah, yeah, I agree. If you have like some references. Or Okay, thank you. Um, Subword uh, engram models have been used uh, to reduce the word error rate in um, uh, uh, speech recognition of languages like Turkish. Um, and they have been used also for compressing the size of the language models because uh, you don't have to cover that many surface forms and you can only uh, keep the prefixes and suffixes. So um, do you see that you can actually do the same kind of compression, uh, like reduce your vocabulary size, for instance? Uh, that's an excellent question. We haven't really tried that. Um, basically keeping only, uh, only the subword information and not the vector for the words, I guess, would be the one way to, to do this. Yeah. Um, I that's, that's an excellent suggestion. We haven't done that, so I cannot really comment about how well it would do. And so let's take the question about Okay. Uh, okay. okay.